Welcome everybody to the Dexterum Tabletop Experience. Uh, why not? It's DT, so we had to come up with a T, and this happened to work out just fine. Uh, we're looking at uh, Dave's character sheet right now because he had some questions about it. And uh, just to run down it, Dave, during our, uh, you know what, I'm going to minimize this, and I'm going to review our uh, adventure from the last time. Uh, Dave's character is represented by the Kung Lao looking dude with the sword. He uses a, a green die. And uh, he's character type is a basic fighter. Mansa is utilizing the purple die tonight and he is playing a drow of some sort, I understand, and he's an archer. And what I like to do at the beginning of any campaign I do with you guys is kind of review what we did the last time. Uh, those of you looking, I'm the hero over there. And despite what uh, Dave says about his character looking pretty badass, and he does, he's not nearly as badass as my guy on a pony. So there. <sighs> Alright, I'm gonna... guy on a pony? My guy's on a pony. Look at it. I see Bob painting a glass. What? Oh, you mean your avatar? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I'm going to get there rid of those go. for now because those cover up too much of the screen. But down at the bottom of the screen, gang, you can see that uh, JC is in teal, Just Ace is in green, and Mansa is in purple. Whenever die rolls happen, that's what's going on. Up on the screen, uh, I am currently using the PC Bob, the bartender. You guys see me moving him around. Mansa and Just Ace characters are both Zeke and Eric. Merrick, excuse me. Merrick, yeah. yeah. They don't see quite as much stuff as I see, but when they click on tunes, they are able to switch them and move them and do things like that, but they don't see quite as much information as you see from me. See, there goes Merrick. Now, as I said, what I like to do, guys, is kind of recap what happened in the last episode. Would either of you like to take the lead and describe what you did, or shall we go to Bob the Bartender's... Uh, personal journal that he keeps every night regarding all the uh, shenanigans and tomfooleries that happen in his uh, restaurant. <laughs> it's a yeah, mountainside inn. We're in a mountainside inn. I'll remind you of that. It's a mountainside inn between two towns, and um, it's cold out. And uh, go ahead. What what happened, uh, Merrick? Do you remember? Well, I can recap basically what happened from my perspective. I had just recently escaped a big battle uh, in the Underdark, which is where Drow Elves, which my characters live, and um, I happened onto this tavern. Uh, where I was uh, relaxing and having, trying to relax and have myself a, a uh, fine elven wine, when we, uh, when, when some uh, goblins happened on us and attacked us, and we sort of had a battle within the tavern. Yep. I can go further if you want. I'm all right. Hold on, uh, Dave. Uh, your character Zeke. Do you remember it pretty much the same way? Is there anything you'd like to add? I mean, we can add details if we want. We took down three of them. Bob turned out to be a bit of a fighter himself with his act. Uh, I drunkenly fell over a table, but uh, we all did fine in the fight. I think I took the most damage, though. Yeah, yeah, you did get hit a couple times pretty hard, but uh, it wasn't so bad. You had agreed to muck the t stalls the next morning, so he's letting you sleep uh, through true the night. Story. He had a yeah, true story. He had asked for your <laughs> dagger as a collateral on that task, but after the fight, he gave you that dagger back. And uh, here now, he's uh, giving you you two uh, rooms to sleep in in the in the night. Now, before we go into what happened in the middle of the night, because something did happen, and we're going to discuss that. Um, let's uh, let's talk about some of the things that uh, I assigned you in the way of your abilities based on your actions, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, uh, sure. I'm, I'm listening. Okay. Let me make sure I got the right thing. All right, so Dave, first things first. Uh, I need to... I wish I could put a... I'm going to jam a penny in here so I can keep this pressed down while I'm flipping through my personal journal here. There we go. Can you guys still hear me? Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, so Zeke uh, was running around. He was doing some stuff, and uh, one of the first things he did was to uh, attempt to leap over a table and do some type of acrobatic uh, uh, kill switch thing, but I don't know what that was all about. But because of that, based on that inspiration, he was assigned a special ability, and if you look down under your spells, Dave, you will see that one of your special abilities is called uh, da -da -da -da, Acrobatic Faint, right? And if you'll recall, that was, uh, I asked you to make a dex roll, which you unfortunately failed. So you ended up on the ground and uh, from your prone position ended up attacking as well, which also generated another special ability for you called Rising Strike. 
Now, both of these have special bonuses to your attack bonus when you choose to use them, but uh, they also have uh, significant, um, what's the word I'm looking for, things that have to be in place for them to be used. All right. Uh, prerequisites, that's the word I'm looking for. For example, your acrobatic feint, you must make a successful dexterity roll to, uh, to go through the motions of leaping to one side and spinning or whatever you're doing and then pushing off a wall with your other leg, kind of distracting whatever target you're going for. And the other one, rising strike, will automatically stun a target regardless of success or failure, but can only be used from a position of prone, kneeling, or seated. Does that make sense for you, Dave? It does. Okay. Then I gave you a couple other little abilities there that'll help out uh, with some decision making along the line. Did you have an opportunity to look over these rage abilities that I assigned for you and how they work <laughs> and how you recover rage points? Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Um, save? Yes. Where, where does that come from? Savings throws is affected yeah, by Yeah, it says uh, one of the abilities is, where did I see it? Enraged Fortitude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enraged Fortitude, save plus level divided by two. Yes, that is an example of the math that we were talking about earlier. Level divided by two is how much additional points you can assign to whatever savings throw you make do. For example, if you look, right now your Dragon Breath savings throw reads 1. Alright, and I believe that's based on your constitution? No, that one's dexterity. That's based on your dexterity, your ability to avoid the Dragon Breath. Now, you can roll your die, and normally in some adventures, in some game styles, you would have to use your Enraged Fortitude before you did the roll, but I'm allowing you to do it afterwards if you'd like, which means if you rolled and you were close, you might expend some of your Rageous Efforts to increase your save by 1 at level 1, and at level 2 it's, level, it's 1, but at level 3 it would be a plus 2, okay, because we're going to go round it up on these particular maths. Does that make sense for you? Is it, are you okay with that? Absolutely. Okay, so that's what that is. Was there any other questions you had looking at your character sheets? I know we uh, looked over your skill sets. Are you comfortable with your strength and constitution being your two primary stats as a fighter slash mercenary for hire? Uh, I mean, I like it. It was it's very detailed, very well thought out. <laughs> uh, I'm sure there'll be more questions down the way as we go, but uh, I'll try to I'll try to let you. I won't argue. I'll just ask. We'll see about that. Okay, man, so he says he's not going to argue. Can you believe this? <laughs> no comment. No comment, indeed. All right, Dave, uh, I gave in to your backstory, backstory as well, so you do have a named weapon. This is your family heirloom. It is a bastard sword that does a base damage of 1d8 when one ha hand with, held with one hand, excuse me, and 1d10 when held with both hands. All right, you okay with that? I, I gave you some basic gear. Uh, in your backpack, you can check it out, and I gave you a couple copper because that's all you earned from uh, defeating those goblins, and you were penniless, and that was part of your backstory when you were in the inn. Right. Put, you, put never, you put never next to sex in my uh, character sheet? I didn't, but you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Dave. Dave, did you do that? I can't change anybody's stuff. Not now. I didn't put never in there. Not never, no way. Anyway. <laughs> I, I really didn't. All right, man. So your character is Merrick, uh, and you said his last name is something. Sectual, or whatever. <laughs> Sectual, yeah, but, but he's of the house something something. Zarbrin. Yeah, as a matter of fact, let me change that. It should be Mer Merrick Zarbrin. Did you just change your sex to M? Yeah. Okay. So I'm witnessing you edit your character sheet on the fly. Never was probably close. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also change the name of the avatar. Oh, did you? Mm-hmm. Yes, you did. Looks pretty good. All right. You just change the spell a little bit because it's not showing up. And refresh. It'll show up. It's down at the bottom. I see it. Mansa, your scores uh, have been assigned, and we've already discussed why your intelligence is negative one. Would you like to remind everyone why that is? Uh, because I'm young and I'm foolish. 
Young by Elf stands. Yeah, of course. I just changed my age also. Yeah, it looks good. 150? That sounds about right. Yeah. All right, so you lost... Uh, your intelligence was marked down as negative um, because I assigned these values after your initial getting familiar with the interface. And uh, let's not forget, and we'll never will forget, that you chose, uh, instead of hiding behind a table for cover and doing such a cowardly deed, you decided that, you know, getting under cover once and shooting is fine, but now I'm going to pick up this table and go smash into some fools. And that didn't work out too well for you, did it? <laughs> not at all. Okay. Also, uh, after that uh, little engagement to familiarize you with the tools was done, you went and tried to make some uh, extra money. Do you remember how you might try to do that? Yeah, I thought that uh, the box that was hidden behind the, the uh, bar was actually uh, loose change for patrons to help themselves to. Okay, I really didn't think that, but I did try to get into it and, and help myself to some loose change. Which didn't go well for me. Uh, little did I know that the bartender had traps set uh, around the uh, box. And try, as I tried to sneak upon it and, and didn't do that too well, I made a bunch of noise and alerted the bartender who saw me trying to sneak up on the box. And then the trap sprung upon me and kind of caused me to yell out. <laughs> that is correct. And based on the things you did, I gave you an extra bonus point in hide ability because you were able to hide slightly. And based on that hide ability, I also gave you a special ability that you can use down listed underneath your spells. Have you found that uh, special ability? It's the last one on your list. A uh, special ability. Mm, that's where I should be looking. Okay. Underneath your spells list, do you see the word spells down at the bottom on the left-hand side? There's a large um, content box, context box. Okay. Hold on. And high plus level. That's correct. So okay. Zetsu is your special ability. You may use uh, Zetsu to increase your ability to hide. And what that is, is it, uh, what if your hide bonus is one right now, and you may add your level number to that bonus for the cost of mana that was assigned for it. Okay. Okay, so right now you both have level one things, so it only requires one level of mana or rage. Does that make sense for both of you? Mm-hmm. Okay. One of the other things you did, Mansa, was to uh, pull out uh, two arrows and sling them across the room at uh, two different targets. <laughs> so in, uh, in recognition of that attempted feat, I have assigned you an ability called Quin Twin Strike. Excuse me. And you and I have already talked about this before, but basically, so Dave knows, it allows him to fire two missiles, either thrown or shot, and it gives him a bonus to his attack that is equal to one half of his level rounded up. Similar to yours. And uh, he may assign this attack bonus to one or both of the targets. All right. What else did he do? Well, he's sneaky. So yes, pretty much. Because you're sneaky, I gave you an ability called... Oh, no, this, the reason I gave you this ability, Focus Strike. Uh, you might recall how you pulled out an arrow and tried to pin one of the goblins to the floor by shooting through his foot. Oh, yeah. All right, so for that, I was inspired to give you the ability Focus Strike which you can only use when you're not actively engaged in melee. So it, it requires a certain amount of concentration, so you can't be fighting somebody right next to you. You have to be a few feet away from anybody, or hidden, mm -hmm. or something of that nature. And uh, you can use uh, that formula to uh, increase your ability to hit something. Okay. All right, so those are some things that you guys might want to consider when you're coming along here. Your thief abilities, Mansa, there's, they're going to go up, I suspect, because of the attitude you display while you're playing. <laughs> But uh, for right now, you did not get any bonuses to remove traps because you didn't even look for traps. And okay. uh, you were caught by that. And you did not get a bonus to open locks because you were caught by the trap and never got around to opening the lockbox. I gave you a longbow that does 1d8 points of damage per arrow that strikes, right? And it gives mm -hmm. you three times critical. The critical range is a 19 or a 20 on a, tw on a d20 die roll. And I think I gave you a special ability that increases that range to an 18 through 20. You have one piece of silver. It was the one piece of silver that you displayed to the bartender to act like you had enough money to pay for your wine. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so those are your abilities. You can see your armor class near the top, and you can see your hit points near the top. You already have, excuse me, health bars over your characters, and you have a rage bar and a mana bar. So I think that's it. I think we're all caught up. Okay. There, right. was, uh, there was one moment you pointed out during the uh, battles last time when um, there was still three uh, 
Wait, was it goblins or trolls or whatever? Well, to be completely forthcoming to uh, our viewers who are watching now or via my YouTube channel later, at the time I called them orcs, and I realized that I should probably give you guys goblins to work with because, uh, well, that would be more appropriate now. So uh, we're, yeah, gonna a little, we're a little revisionist history, and we're going to call them goblins. So while there were still three goblins, the, the choice was to attack one of three, and I chose to leave the one closest to Bob the Bartender alone because Bob the Bartender had looked like a... An old warrior. I could tell just by the way that he entered the bar or with his. <laughs> when he comes, he when he came screaming wisdom. out of the back room and jumped yeah. over the bar rail to uh, yeah. get into the fight. Yeah. With a like, giant I hammer. <laughs> this guy knows what he's doing. Yep, he does. He made arrangements for you guys. You're uh, sleeping through the night. Uh, Dave, you uh, are you sleeping peacefully through the night? I definitely chose. Well, while we we're shaving, uh, saving a room, sharing a room. Well, you know, Merrick's an elf, and he doesn't trust you yet, so he's taking his own room over there. Okay. Well, yeah, I slept through the night. Door closed. Okay. Dave, here's a little story for what Merrick did in the middle of the night. In the middle of the night, Merrick took it upon himself to reinvestigate whether or not anything was in the box. I was sleepwalking. <laughs> he was sleepwalking? <laughs> oh, my gosh. He didn't know it. Okay, he knew it. Okay, so he, he was awake and consciously trying to move around the bar, and that's the kind of thing that would require a little hide and move silently stuff, but we're going to let it go because in the interest of getting this story progressed. He went over there and checked out the box. He went to go find the box, but the box wasn't there. If uh, you'd care to speculate, I'd be happy to tell you whether you're right or wrong, or I can just tell you what happened. No, he told me where it was. That's right. That's right, because Bob the bartender saw you fail at trying to pretend that you weren't stealing from him. So that's why your diplomacy isn't as good as it should be, and your bluff abilities are not uh, enhanced. But uh, the box is gone, and uh, you suspect he's sleeping with it under his mattress. Uh, didn't one of you go and inspect his mattress and find some filthy l pictures or something, too? Yeah, I think that was me the same day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, having not, having not found the lockbox, uh, I presume that you disgruntledly slept walk back to your bedroom and uh, called it a night until the next day. Yeah, sounds about right. Now, both of you are awakened to the sound of a fire roiling and uh, the smell of coffee. So it's the next morning, and you can kind of hear Bob out in the main area of the bar getting the day ready for, or getting the uh, venue ready for the day. So it's on ah. you, gentlemen, as you arise to the next day. If there's anything you would like to do. I would love a cup of coffee. 